I'm Charles Bartlett from the University of Delaware. Okay, so you have some specimens in front of you, and what we're going to do now is work with the key uh, to genera of Delphacidae north of Mexico. And this is a key that is not yet published, but it's been it's part of a monograph that's been accepted for publication and should be out later this year. Um, so let's start with a very obvious point that uh, this is the family Delphacidae and the characteristic of the family Delphacidae is the presence of a large spur, which you can see right here on the apex of the hind tibia. Now this spur happens to be flattened and bearing a row of teeth along the posterior margin and that it, those collectively are features of the more advanced Delphacidae. Um, all the things that we'll be working with are in the subfamily Delphacinae, the tribe Delphacini, a group that includes uh, nearly all the pest species and almost everything that would be in intercepted. You know, not everything, but almost everything that would be intercepted will be in this subfamily and tribe. Um, first, uh, after that, let me point out uh, very briefly that separating males from females um, for delphacids is trivial. Delphacids are, delphacids and succeeds are among the most primitive groups of, of plant hoppers. And both of those groups have well-developed ovipositors. So this is a female, and this is the ovipositor right here. So that, and the ovipositor is used to insert eggs in the plant material. So that is as opposed to this arrangement right here. This, um, this is a male. This is the male pygopher and the pair of mirrors right there. And you may be able to see um, off segment 10 some projections. So male delphacids, particularly in the more advanced lineages, have structures that you can see without the section. In but in spite of that, you often do have to remove the abdomen and clear it to see features that you need to see. Um, so that, that male and female. So uh, for delphacids, males are, are uh, frequently required for identification, um, well, beyond tribe, certainly. Uh, some tribal features refer to the male genitalia, and certainly once you get into the delphacini, you have to have a male, um, or you won't get very far with a key. Um, and that's a little unfortunate, but that's, that's where we are. No, you don't have this in front of you as we go through the key. Um, I have specimens that are dissected that I can show you. Um, I wanted to take a moment and look at uh, a male. So when you, to, to examine delphacids, uh, to examine the male genitalia of the delphacids, you have to uh, break the end of the, end of the abdomen off and put it in KOH. Um, and if you're not in a hurry, 10% KOH overnight. If you are in a hurry, you can either up the percentage KOH or heat it or both. And in either case, what you'll end up with is the, the end of the abdomen here. If you wanted to look at the timbal mechanism, it would be up here. and this right here is the male terminalia. Um, this structure is the pygopher. You can see segment 10 up there. You may be able to make up segment 11 right there. And what we have is the paramirs are resting right in here. It's not a very good view of the paramirs. Um, the, there's a connective that extends back here. And the ediagus is right here. You have a structure right here that leads from the base of the ediagus to segment 10. That is the suspensorium. The suspensorium is a characteristic of the delphacini and will not 
be uh, in the other tribes of Belfasid, or at least not well developed. Um, when you have a tiger fur and you've cleared it, it will look something like this. And with a little luck or a little skill, you can push on the base of the adiagus or perhaps pull on the apex of the, the uh, segment's pen, and you can evert the adiagus so you can see it a little better. I didn't do it that with this one, um, partly because I could see what I needed to see, uh, and partly that is um, when you do that, you stand a reasonable chance of damaging the pygopher, and I wanted one that, that um, looked good. So here is another one. Let me just maneuver it just for a moment. More or less in lateral view. In this case, the uh, ediagus has been pushed out a little bit, and when that happens, segment 10 uh, rotates um, at, you know, the axis of rotation is up here, so segment 10 rotates, and if there are processes off of segment 10, they become much more conspicuous. But often you have to push the adiagus out in order to see the features of the adiagus a little more clearly. Um, but once again, you can uh, reasonably see the sesmensorium and the connective and the paramere's in there.